Morning all. I thought we could have a look at the very interesting game of the Tatar Steel which occurred in round 5. Yifan Hu playing white, 2603 against Hikaru Nakamura, 2769. A very exciting opening in this one. After e4, Nakamura chooses the Sicilian defence. After knight f3, knight c6, inviting often the Sveshnikov. If white plays d4, it can, can go into all sorts of other things though. White actually plays knight c3 here, a tricky move order perhaps. Tempting uh, black to maybe play something like g6. g6 is actually played. And so the resulting uh, transposition looks like a Sicilian dragon. In fact, now, Sicilian dragon territory. Now, often in uh, Sicilian dragon territory, okay, you can play with the bishop or you can maybe play f3 and queen d2, but we'll do a reference check maybe what the most popular systems are. Um, moving the bishop out might have some classic uh, issues with it. Well, there's loads and loads of theory, so it's, it's very difficult to, to say anything about that, actually. OK, let's just move on from here. Bishop c4 is going into a huge amount of theory as well. Uh, bishop b3, OK. And we'll check about f3 later in the second pass. Interestingly though, now perhaps, is this move a6. So black hasn't committed yet to this move d6. So is this going to be some kind of tricky transposition where one side is trying to get something uh, which maybe they shouldn't have if it followed the normal kind of course to get to this position? Or is it just going to simply transpose into something absolutely bog standard? We see f3 and now in fact d6 is played. OK, Queen D2. OK, now here, Sicilian Dragon players might often be thinking uh, Bishop D7 and then later when White castles, Knight E5, Rook C8 and Knight C4 just to extinguish the danger on this diagonal, which would mean in turn that H4, H5 sometimes can be answered with FG. So getting rid of this light square bishop is often a key consideration in the Sicilian dragon. But the option to take it off here is, is more f forcible with um, knight a5. It has some perks over knight e5. So that's already quite interesting. And I'm not entirely sure, um, well, uh, that Yifan is used to this type of position where every tempo is critical and that's uh, basically what Nakamura said in the post-game interview of this game that um, to, p to play the Sicilian Dragon or something really sharp every tempo becomes absolutely uh, critical. Uh, Yifan plays Bishop h6 here and we see after Bishop takes h6, Queen takes h6 uh, it looks uh, quite dangerous for the Black King, potentially. We've got the classic tearing open the H-file. Um, the Bishop, though, can be taken at any time from Black at the moment. Uh, but it looks dangerous to have the Queen on H6 here. But has Nakamura lost like the pride of his position, this Fianchetto Bishop? He actually plays E5, which it's quite interesting in some respect that it's offering a backward pawn, but the backward pawn is, is the least of black's concerns here. After knight d e2, he now plays b5, and you can see that one of the ideas is to try and control d5 quite quickly. Maybe take and then play for d5, bishop b7 or d5 immediately. Uh, so that becomes a little bit of a concern to maybe lock down uh, against black playing d5 here and perhaps that this is this helps explain this next move it's about a lockdown on d5 and and generally uh, to try and prove that white doesn't necessarily need to go for the king but can just target uh, a pawn in this position and one could argue well with with the bishop removed what what is the danger for white's king on the queen's side here uh, without that fire-breathing dragon, the fire coming usually from that bishop, it's gone. So is there a lot of pressure on the queen's side here? Or can white simply 
change the nature of this position and target the backward d6 pawn. So it's interesting, does white actually try and go ahead just brutally with, with the attack? Maybe that is really fitting in more with the style of the position. Or was the concern, you know, h4, knight h5, g4, maybe a pawn sack, knight f4 with dynamic play? We'll check in the second pass, but this next move you might find a little bit surprising, queen d2. Because the queen was was with one intention quite aggressive and you know blocking the h pawn from moving and could could have formed part theoretically of an h file uh, slaughter campaign but now the campaign is is like shifted to this d6 pawn and what is interesting is is trying to prove if if this is a viable campaign here for white or has it given black um some interesting opportunity now uh to do with liberating or queenside pressure. We see now a forcing move b4 and already it's it's apparent that knight d5 for example maybe knight takes here, knight takes there, queen takes, bishop e6 and then d5 will be forced through. White doesn't want d5 forced through and wants to try and keep a lock on black playing d5 which might explain now this this next move uh, knight a4. Okay, tactically, it's also trying to prove maybe some some technical weaknesses with b6 in some variations, where white castles queenside if black ever dares to take and play d5. But um, what Naka does now is quite interesting. He takes actually on b3. Um, after a takes b3, okay, this knight's slightly stranded. Uh, unless it's got b6 later. But what if, you know, for example, white castle, you might think also knight c5 might be on the cards, exploiting the pin to get the knight out of trouble. Also, of course, the b pawn is now loose and attacked, and this is a serious threat as well. Uh, but this next move is really quite strong, it seems, a5. It's not only protecting b4. I wonder if you can spot its relevance to White's alternate campaign here of attack. Instead of going for the king, it was decided that the d6 pawn was an issue and, and keeping a lock on, on the d5 square. But, um, okay, so this campaign looks consistent now, castling queenside, targeting d6, even knight c, c5 is a potential uh, threat, it seems, uh, to get the knight out of trouble. But, can you spot what black plays now. And again, it's quite a heavily useful resource, this next move. So I'll give you 10 seconds. Can you spot Black's next move? Okay, Naka's playing Rook A6. As I say, the impression I got from this game, though, uh, so far, is like a lot of the fun, in theory, has been taken out of Black's position because he hasn't got the bishop. But mind you, playing e5 without the bishop is better, otherwise you'd just be locking that in. But without this fire-breathing bishop, does Black have the same fun uh, factor from this position? Well, the thing is with rook a6, it defends d6, so there's no technical issue with d6. Black doesn't have to be necessarily in a rush to play d5, not that it's at all palatable at the moment anyway. But rook a6 also is counter-attacking, it's not just defensive, it can help to try and get an attack down the c-file. And really, uh, white is a long way away from the classic dragon slaughter on the h-file. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts here that white basically, uh, by switching campaign here to the d6 pawn, has has perhaps lost critical tempo used for the, for the main uh, thematic plan of the position against the dragon, which is the classic h file attack, and here it comes a little bit slow. I mean, it comes, but now it's a bit a bit slow. That h4, uh, it's not such a menace. And this move, bishop e6, renews the idea that black uh, might be interested in d5 as well, but it's also just targeting the king, even if d5 is not a plan. The idea of playing rook c6 is with tempo now, bishop b3 will be a threat, that the rooks are ready to kind of double 
and then all of a sudden, well, once the queen moves, all of a sudden, black's position has got this positive energy to it and excitement. That actually, black's attack and white's double pawns might not help the king's safety that much in certain respects. Black's attack might be the more fun than white's attack. But white goes in with h5, and it looks potentially quite scary still. This next move again is, is like attack and defense. <clears throat> Queen e7 is preparing defense because hg, fg, black's defending like h7. So any Queen h6 looks potentially more than harmless, maybe even just Queen g7. But it's also attacking because it's making way for potentially the rooks doubling. Okay, and there's also taken away the knight c5 resource. And we need to check in a second pass, actually, if knight c5 was actually a useful move. Maybe the knight could have gone to d3 after, or was it far too slow? Um, maybe there was just bishop takes b3. Because the king on c1, it might have been totally ruled out there. But anyway, so we've got an attack and defense type move here. So is black getting a very fun looking position now? White's, you know, playing like a aggressively, of course, but is it all a little bit on the slow side here? We see now the move knight d7. So what's the idea of this? Potentially, it looks as though knight d7 might even facilitate trying to lock down the position. But surely, you know, maybe this knight can just come to f5. Maybe the, the one another major point though might be just knight c5, um, or just doubling, and just just the queen having um, a view on this on the dark squares here. Let's let's see what happens now, though. Um, in this position. Is it so clear how white can continue the attack? If we, we can reinstall the queen or we can open the h file, but um, ultimately it seems that hg, fg is a bit harmless. And black's going to be doubling the rooks. And we can see uh, a pretty, pretty nifty attack building up quite quickly just on c2. In fact, black's e5 is deprived, you know. It, the d4 square, so even that can't defend c2. What can white actually do to def defend against this quite quickly evolving attack on c2? It's a bit of a panic situation. And the other thing, though, is this knight just looks ridiculous on a4. Uh, this is just the cruelty of chess that, in some games, uh, previously great players that are beating 2700s in some tournament are made to look, you know, a bit silly. Their pieces are just made to look silly. But there's something about maybe the opening, which being tempo critical and the real danger of changing campaign strategies. I mean, it's been shown to be proven harmless because of this fine a5 and rook a6. And now this, this state of being behind in tempo for the attack is really evident. So this might explain White's next move. It's a little bit panicky, a little bit maybe too on the dynamic side, f4. If the bluff is accepted, I mean, of course, f5 is now friend, but g pawn is on and it's taken, it's tested, call, calling uh, the bluff of the attack here. f5, again, it looks aggressive and it looks kind of thematic, it looks dangerous, but Nack has turned into like computer munching mode now with his next move. He plays g takes f5 and saying, you know, pro prove this attack. Really, have you got a great attack here? Uh, e takes f5, now a safety consideration, getting the king away from the g-file. The h-file, of course, he knows now is is no use for white, and white getting a pawn to h5, unless that pawn is useful for h6, it hasn't achieved a great uh, deal, it hasn't opened that road. Okay, so we see queen d3 now, doesn't want to lose uh, f5, and it's a problem, and it's also attacking the rook. That moves, and now, of course, the threats are still apparent on White's king. White plays rook d2 in preparation. Uh, knight f6, and it looks as though now there's various interesting possibilities, like d5, e4. Black doesn't really want to take on h5 to open this line against the king. Uh, but let's see, so knight g3, now e4 is, is used, queen e3. 
and he gives the queen a fine uh, place in the center now and the threat of bishop f3 hitting g3 so black seems dominant in the center and may not even need uh, to be in a rush to play the move d5 uh, rook f1 we see bishop f3 and black starting to take over the position there's no real attack here is there and it's like black is uh, threatening things like the knight and also knight g4 to hit the queen soon the knight moves and we see knight g4 uh, white plays queen d4 and in this position that could just doubles rooks so really he's got a great position here with no worries at all about this king something has gone really dreadfully wrong for white to be in such a bad state here uh, a pawn down with black having all the attack white having this terrible knight on a4 uh, this knight looks pretty annoying as well it's it's not a nice picture for white we see the move c4 and a simplification now bishop takes e2 not minding this simplification um, after rook takes e2 it's very nice to play this next move supporting the pawn and using the pin here so everything is well coordinated for black after king b1 okay Necker takes on c4 swapping e4 for that c4 pawn and supporting now the knight, knight on e5 and that knight is clearly better than this one the rooks are more coordinated, coordinated than white's rooks doing something active on the c file so it looks like a dreamy position now this this transposition into this uh, position here it seems really absolutely fantastic for black rook h4 okay the knights allowed to uh, come back into the game a tiny bit rook d8 okay we see now rook c2 now b3 squeezing white rook c3 and the rook comes back just to support um, b3 here rook c8 exchanging off a pair of rooks which Naka doesn't mind um, king g7 and now this king could also come and maybe attack this pawn check but for the moment rook g4 is not in a rush maybe there's some dangers with his king if he does come out immediately um, but he controls that g-file to avoid that uh, possibility and now there's a serious threat on b2 there's things like knight d3 and potentially rook b2 but here it can just be you know taken it's not the right situation now um, so knight d6 king steps out attacking h5 now rook d1 b2 is a bit of a target here it's only this knight holding up against knight c4 we see a4 okay and now it's it's just looking pretty loose why can't black for example consider soon taking this pawn white plays king c1 check and here uh, knight c4 and this position is is looking pretty bad in fact so bad that um Yifen who resigns I think we should look at it from the black perspective now and look at this final position just to see how bad is it really it's pretty bad uh, let's take the knight for example uh, this this one seems to be dropping let's try and hold it on hold on to it then this one might drop one of these is going to drop or both of them will drop Let's, let's decide if 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 rook h1 well both of them are dropping it's it's just pretty hopeless ending really uh, it's it's not worth checking out any further than that so we saw you know a change of campaign from white uh, just wondering about this the Sicilian dragon uh, this way to get the Sicilian dragon um, in this position let's start checking on the references uh, maybe a bit further actually let's let's check a bit further uh, than this uh, so Bishop e3 is the most 
common move anyway from there. Let's, let's go a little bit further to this bishop c4, which I think um, it is the most popular move in this position, even without black having committed the d pawn yet. By far, it's the most popular move. Bishop b2, 3,800. So bishop c4, over 10,000. Okay, so nothing too bad from white, theoretically. Um, castling is the top move, yep. Now, in this position, Bishop b3, by far, we're going into mainstream, an absolutely mainstream position, okay? The only slight quirkiness about it is that d6 hasn't been played yet, which you would normally get from from the outset playing a normal Sicilian Dragon move order. But Bishop b3 has been played by Anan, Kramnik, Gashimov, Vimchuk, a lot of great players, 5,228. Next is Castling Kingside, 801. So this is fine so far, one would say. Now, a6, a6 is interesting. I wonder if this is part of Necker's opening preparation. In this position, going back to the normal Sicilian Dragon with d6 is the top move of choice. 2,325 games. Xbarth and Ankelson, they all, in this position, from this move order, have played d6 here. Uh, sl slightly less popular, a5, has been played 1,840 times, 1,840 times. Knight g4 has been played 389 times. Interesting move there. Tactical. Uh, in fact, so tactical, that's fascinating. What what is actually the idea behind knight g4? Let's let's just quickly see this. Oh, sorry, it's just simply on on d4. <laughs> I thought it was to do with d5. So, in this position, um, queen a5 is the fourth most popular. E6 fifth, and a6 as played in the game has only been played 107 times before. And there's a there's a guy the top player on this <clears throat> is Pogorov. Pogolov, haven't really heard of him, but um, it's undoubtedly going to go back to mainstream move uh, a position. Surely, after f three, now the move d six, we're back into tons of <clears throat> games by transposition. Surely, or is this slightly different? Queen d two. We've got loads of games uh, from this position in my database, and. The top move here is actually bishop d7, 48 games. Second most popular, knight a5, 43 games. So knight a5. And bishop h6 looks pretty useful. But actually castling queenside straight away is the top most played. I've got 39 games with that. h4, 20 games. So bishop h6, third most popular. <clears throat> now black taking. Well, we're into very few games here, so we're kind of come out, coming off the rails. Unless, unless we're transposing back after e5, I think we've come off my reference database anyway. We have no games found from here. So an interesting uh, position. From engine view, it looks as though Black's position is is okay. So Necker plays b5. And the engine actually likes queen d2 here, as though there is a problem with d6. So that's interesting. We could argue intuitively, or or just just echo um, the sentiments of Nakamura after the game that um, it's as though Yifan didn't understand position that queen d2 was was tempo gaining, but it was actually mentioned from an engine view um, of the position. But now it's, it's finding other stuff. So is it like a deep Deep trap. This, 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 this loss of tempo just to target d6. Is it kind of some kind of positional temptation trap in an otherwise quite a sharp position? So it's interesting. Queen d2. We get this forcing sequence. B4. The knight going to a4 doesn't look too great. Knight d5 may have been slightly better. Just accepting whatever the consequences of that are. So here, strongest for white is to get away from this d5 here. 
and this kind of position might be okay. And casting king side is more prudent, of course, because a4 is going to blast white to bits if, can't, if she castles queen side. So here it looks as though <clears throat> this could be quite all right for white. Okay, <clears throat> but after knight a4, this might be the start of um, black's troubles. Now we see knight takes b3, and black solving the d6 problem um, and b4. I mean, it's something has to be done about b4 anyway. It just turns out that a5 also helps sort out d6 from this resource. So now black's slightly better. It seems this this plan is it's it's against the knight on a4 and white's absence of an, of the classic h file slaughter. It seems a little bit on the slow side. But what about the move knight c5? Okay, just what one moment. <coughs> Getting a bit croaky there. The move knight c5 doesn't really do much. If the knight goes to d3, is it doing much here? In fact, it looks as though the knight was actually a useful blockader against a4. So in some positions, it might actually be that a4 is a key resource. So let's have a quick look at this sort of pattern emerging. Block up white's attack. And black might be threatening. Okay, d5. Okay, d5 is might the more, more serious concern as well. The knight is also blocking access to stop the break d5 from black. So okay, we get this position with h4. Black's slightly better, it's uncomfortable, especially against a great attacking player and tactical player like Nakamura to have this kind of position. But he's deliberately chosen uh, this kind of dragon to go all out f you know, for the winners. As you mentioned, the, the personality of the opening is, is like a kind of fundamental statement of intent. You know, if you play the Petrov, you might be wanting a draw. If you play Sicilian dragon, you're playing for a win. Um, it's a statement of intent, independent of your style of play. And the intention is for a very sharp, aggressive game, going for the win. Um, intuitively, I thought, well, it's not as fun as the dragons where you get the bishop on the diagonal. But as as he shows, fun can be had on the C file here. Uh, so G4. What is white's actual threat here? Because this knight d7 is a little bit mysterious. So let's see what white is actually threatening. And this might help solve the mystery. It seems that queen g5 might have been an interesting possibility uh, at some point. Because then maybe queen h4 after hg. And then we're looking at h8 here. So Necker's move, actually, when he played knight d7, I think that might help to explain that simply doesn't want to give white the g5 square for a kind of operation like this to go right down the h file, threatening hg and queen h8. So it's defensive against queen g5, it seems. Okay. Roughly about equal, to be fair, but this next move might be a little bit ambitious then. Um, computer says no. Nakamura says no takes the pawn calling white's bluff we see f5 and it starts to get technically worse but as we know you know sometimes it's nice to have just open lines of attack and just go for it because it makes the position difficult to play is that the case here that black's position is actually difficult to play for the material that he's won well after g takes he just sidesteps the g file of course and okay he has to deal with this rook but it's coming in comfortably to double rooks. And it looks as though there's a kind of natural flow even to black's attacking pattern here. The knight, having done its job of stopping all that business with queen g5, can go back and now support both d5 and e4. Uh, but it's e4 that is of particular interest to Naka here, because he's centralizing his queen quite powerfully now, 
with queen e5 and he's threatening at the same time bishop f3 so he's gaining even more tempo to get an even more uh, strong position here knight g4 what else can white do apart from queen d4 queen f4 looks pretty miserable as well uh, taking and rook e8 maybe just using this this past pawn here is pretty dangerous okay it, it doesn't look very pleasant at all in fact this kind of sacrifice well you can just take the rook here it's not even so e3 is going to be really dangerous basically so it's a miserable position uh, it seems to be just going downhill uh, enough mistakes have already been made for white uh, for black to simply just allow going into uh, simplification here especially with this d5 uh, looking quite powerful materially in this position right now black is a pawn up one two three four five six uh, from white sacrificial attack earlier and we see that okay black takes this pawn on c4 and white takes so black is still at the moment a pawn up after b takes black is still a pawn up so no change there he hasn't sacrificed the pawn so I just wanted to make sure of that that there wasn't a pawn sacrifice uh, here this this two to one pawn majority uh, is being held up by a blockading knight but these pawns are also vulnerable potentially useful though if white can get some sort of cheap possibilities with the pawn on h6 restricting the king so Neck is quite conscious perhaps of that and wants to win that material anyway okay the knight coming a little bit back in the game so black could have munched here technically anyway but um, okay he's going for this scenario now where there, there probably isn't much fight to White's position. What, what does White do if she doesn't? What, the knight is kind of stranded here, uh, unless it. There's no other the choice really, apart from rook c8. It looks to be the only move to save the knight. In fact, uh, so that that was pretty cruel that the knight was allowed out for a moment just to be attacked like this. Let's just rewind slightly here. So it seems a little bit odd, perhaps, uh, that the knight here was allowed a little bit of breathing space but actually if you look at this position in more detail and the knight can't get really back to the center via d5 this next move cut out the knight coming back in the game and that is going to put the knight back in its box with b3 and rook b4 it's pretty cruel unless white does what she did uh, to exchange off on c8 here it's pretty cruel stuff and this rook's being held down as well because this pawn's uh, forming part of a mating that on potentially or, or simplification with rook d1 so the knight's being put back in its box otherwise well it's it has to white has to play now rook c8 so brutal forcing uh, further simplification the king now coming out to be an aggressive piece uh, the coast is clear it's not going to be mated it can be used as an attacking piece right now this is the time uh, where it can take part now in the fight as well the remnants of white's position are these weaknesses on f5 and h5 um, now king h6 might also be absolutely possible as well here but uh, it's more comfortable to control that g file perhaps it's pretty nasty stuff knight d a lot of things are just i assume are winning here like knight d3 um, doesn't want to allow any any checks any possibilities maybe of of counterplay it's it's pretty harmless here anyway Th this check is not leading anywhere the king's just coming up the board it's not being mated but it's there are so many ways to win now um, okay so Yifan uh, played on a little bit up to here and resigned here so I think what we can take from this game that if you're in a tournament and you really want to win you can I think the opening choice can make us the your statement uh, and Nekamura made this statement in this game he wanted to win and he got it and um, white switching campaign of attack 
looks a little bit wrong from the tempo perspective. If White wants the H file attack, go for it. Not sort of switch to the D pawn attack. But it just so happens the resourcefulness of Black proved that wasn't effective, that switch of plan earlier to Queen D2. Um, another constant issue was this knight on A4, uh, not seeing the light of day. Um, okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.